Chasing Tales, Episode 14, Back to Work. Kevin has a surprise for Pink, and we continue our tale. Pink sits in the club quietly smoking while looking over some paperwork. The radio plays in the background. And now our new show, HBC Presents, Chasing Tales. Turn that up, Al. The bartender does so. In the background, Jack and Kevin stand together watching her. The closing music comes on, and Kevin steps into the light. Uh, what do you think? Kevin, you found a way to use it, and you were good to me. Thank you. You know what this means. No, what does it mean? You're gonna have to tell me more stories. Pink bows her head and smiles. She spots Jack over his shoulder. She smirks at him and shakes her head. Was this your idea, Jack? Yeah. So where are you recording? Told him he could use your studio since we weren't working on an album right now. Fair enough. I hope you're charging him. She carries the <laughs> stack of papers to Jack. Okay, these are done. And these still need to be done. I gotta go outside. Did I do something wrong? Nah, Kevin. She has something else on her mind. Is she okay? She'll be alright. Pink leans against the brick front of the club and smokes a cigarette. Aislinn appears beside her, holding a pink box from Sins. He opens the box without saying a word. She reaches over without looking and grabs a wrapped piece of cake. How did the class go today? Not bad. How are you doing? I haven't seen you much. I've been hanging in the club. I decided it was time to go out and look at the sun. Hmm. What is this cake? Rum and raisin. What's it do? I didn't ask. Pink leans back and feels the sun on her face, examining the flavor and its effects. She turns her head and spits the cake into the potted plant. Aislinn puts a still-wrapped piece back in the box. Let's go home. Aislinn ports them back to Sinister Sweets. The ambiance of wellness eases her nausea. Pink, are you okay? Sin, what was in that rum raisin? More like run raisin. I was hoping to boost you. It tastes terrible. Yeah, I will try again. Sin gives her a tiny green cupcake. I do have some good news. Otto has succeeded. Really? He was pretty stumped last time I saw him. Sometimes science is this way. It just seems like a quick turnaround. Is he testing it? Duh. So you will not be able to talk to him for a few days. Fair enough. I'm gonna go see Lachesis. You coming, Ace? I'll be right with you. Go ahead without me. Pink leaves. Aislinn leans over to Sin and talks quietly. He didn't get the ink, did he? Honestly, yet. I burned some karma to get Sprax and Angel. Are you kidding me right now? To my shame, yet. Just wait till Pink finds out. I'm not looking forward to it. But please don't tell her. If she asks me directly, she'll know. I can't keep it from her. I know, but do your best. Pink stands over the threads table in Lachesis' office, watching the divine light course through the threads in different colors. She goes back in time a few days to fall into the threads and relive them. Tex and Pink are laying in bed after dinner. I do love you. Understand that, don't you? Pink pauses the playthrough and just stares at them together. Tears roll down her face quietly. Lachesis comes in and notices Pink staring. She touches her. Pink jumps and wipes tears from her face. Pink, it won't help to watch it over and over. You couldn't have saved him. I know. It's what I get from letting myself be vulnerable. No, it's okay that you do that. It means that you are still human under all that magic. I guess. So what's new? I have an idea of something. I want you to look at it. Lachesis leans over the table and tugs at a tangle in red and black. Pink touches the join and is transported in her mind into the time slip. She's standing in the memory of Ferals. An angel is wrestled and <sighs> struggling, a disruption collar around her neck. Pink turns to Lachesis. Is that Lilelia? I believe so, yes. Do I need to go rescue her? No, that's not why you are here. Pink returns her attention to the happening. Sprex stands and examines the angel girl. Her wings are lavender. She had a tag on her that read, For the Ink. <laughs> you really wanted it after all. I know this cost you some karma, miss. 
He hooks his chain to her collar. He has accepted the price. The angel is subdued by the connection. Rissa stands nearby watching the exchange. How could she send one of her companions to her death? What was so important? This time, it was containment ink. Rissa raises an eyebrow. And you charged her this much? I wanted to know how bad she wanted it. Hmm, what do you think she wants it for? Hell of honor. <laughs> Fish works in mysterious ways. Sprex huddles over a crystal ball on the table, watching Pink cry to herself. He inhales deeply, the essence of her sorrow climbing all over him, coursing through his veins. His eyes turn blue momentarily. He notices Rissa. He stands aside and offers her a sip of the suffering. Rissa sits hungrily over the crystal ball and inhales. There is so little left. She barely gets a taste. She stands suddenly, looks at Sprex with murder in her eyes. Then she ports away. She scraps again. He laughs and gives Paul a nudge. <laughs> uh, keep an eye on her. <laughs> She's been so bitchy lately. Hey, <laughs> you got it, Both. Aislinn stands at the counter and sins. He reaches out to the left and ports pink to them. Sin, what were you thinking? I was only trying to help. You dropped so much karma in one go. For this? For me? Of course. I was struggling. I knew the girl you sent. How could I know? No more angel exchanges, period. I would have rather done without the damn thing. Sin, you have to work harder for shepherd class now. What were you thinking? I don't know what to say. Well, don't do it again. You need to extract her. And I'm so mad you can deal with Turns boys on your own. Pink nodded at Aislinn. He ported them to her apartment. Pink storms and rages around the room. How did he think that was going to fly? I don't know. I don't even want to use the ink now. I just want to lay all you back. I know you can't go, but post up with Mr. who will have the best view. Damn it, Sin. Send me back to the club. I have things to do. Pink walks back into the club and nods at Al. He makes her a whiskey sour and puts it on the bar. She sweeps it away and heads to her dressing room. Kevin is there. So, do you really like it? Yes, Kevin. You did a great job. I knew I could trust you. Thanks. So, Pink, about those stories. Okay. Where was I? Um, ah. Ressa was stirring up the local minister against Brenna. She wasn't just doing that. She was making dangerous chit-chat all over the village. It was dark, and then slowly the light of torches grew, making stripes in the room that danced violently about. The chatter of an angry crowd hung in the air outside. Helga lay still. Brenna rose and put on her shawl, just as the pounding on the door started. Stay down, Helga. I'll handle this. Brenna opened the door as meekly as she could manage. Pray, friends, what brings you to me at this hour? We have reason to believe you are a witch. The crowd of torch-lit villagers mumbled. Brenna held up her hand. You all know me. Alton, did I not kill your daughter last winter? And Rob, did I not save your mother's spring? You know I have done you not but good. How could you believe such rumors? Shame on you. Two of the city guards wrestled her away from the door. Inside, Helga began to pant. She felt the feeling rise up in her throat as the sound traveled out and into the ears of the crowd. The charm worked, for they all acted like they woke up from a dream, confused as to why they were even there. They dispersed in slow, wandering bursts. Finally, only Waverly stood before the door. He gazed at it for a long time before he too left. Brenna came inside and bolted the door. Did you cast the spell? You know I would not let him take you. Brenna considered this. Free of Ressa's influence, she found herself grateful. She patted Helga's hair. The next morning they went into town to get food for the day, and everywhere they went they got furtive glances and were met with whispering. Helga bought all the food because no one would take Brenna's money. Brenna's brow furrowed as they walked unmolested back to their shop. 
Helga began making some food while Brenna pulled books from the shelves and hid them in secret pockets all over the house. Soon, there was no trace of magic anywhere. The day passed slowly, only one or two came today. Brenna and Helga drank tea in silence for a long time. Helga was first to break. I couldn't let them take you away. Brenna nods absently. Her mind filled with a hundred horrors. News of the witch hammer had reached their little hamlet and left its mark. Now a real witch hunter was here. They could not hold them off indefinitely, especially with the dark presence that whispered in the streets for their blood. What can we do? Is there magic that can save you? Yeah, but I am tired of this fight. I'm more worried about you. If they try me, they will make you testify or put you to the fire. You know, I... Hush. Someone is near. Tonight they had come again, more timid than last night. Brenna opened the door and two priests stood clutching their Bibles. The tall man was Reverend Waverly, and the smaller priest was their local man, Reverend Klaus. Bitter, mein Frau. We must perform the test. He insists on examining you. Waverly strides up and rips Brenna's shift off. We don't ask permission from witches. He went over her by candlelight. It was the first time Helga had actually seen her naked. Waverly poked and prodded for the marks he was looking for. She had a large mole on the back of her knee, and it was enough for him. Waverly moved to Helga next. Strip, young woman. She did so quickly. She tried to breathe normally, but this was uncomfortable. He touched her in places no one ever had. She felt humiliated and violated. She took it stoically, though inside she was screaming. She's clean. He waved for her to put her clothes on. Helga fetched a new shift for Brenna, who had stood naked and defiant before them. Waverly opened the door and two guards came in. Secure the prisoner. And you, you stay put. We'll be back. You'll need to testify. They bustled Brenna out of the door in her shift in bare feet. She looked back at Helga and swallowed, begging her with her eyes to let her go. I was alone for the first time ever. I closed the shop and did what I could in the meantime. I felt the dark presence of Ressa return to me. I tidied the cottage, waiting for them to come back for me. She began to whisper again. Ah, alone at last. Take a deep breath. This is what freedom feels like. At the moment, freedom is a bit tense. <laughs> Let's see what we can do about that, eh? <laughs> Brenna's arrested? How will Ressa poison Helga's mind? Will Sin be able to face his own demons to rescue Lalea? Stay tuned for Chasing Tales, Lock, Stock, and Barrel?